So we're going to take a look at some configuring the distributed firewall and NSXT, a couple basics, um, just looking at basic application level micro segmentation. So here we have a few default rules that we've created client access. We're allowing anyone to access the web servers with HTTPS. We're allowing the web servers to access the application servers via TCP 8443. And currently, we're just having anything um, from a service perspective from the app to the DB servers, and we'll change that as we add another rule. And we'll also add some granularity around a context profile and the client access to limit, limit certain things like the TLS version um, or Cypher suite that's being offered as well. And we'll take a look at how we do that. Um, first, we're going to look at our actual application itself to make sure, um, verify that we can access that. Um, so we'll go ahead and browse to our web server and we'll make a query to the database to make sure that it's working. We can see, yep, maybe if I want to see everything with A, a couple validations, great. Um, now we want to go ahead and maybe add another rule. We know here in this case, the actual service that we're using is HTTP from the database. So let's go ahead and filter HTTP. Go ahead and add that. We can see it's populated here. It's allowed. We will publish that. As you notice, it wasn't published when we made the change, so it wasn't taking effect. Now it does. Let's go back to our database and we will do another query. And we can see again, we're querying the database. And now let's go ahead and test blocking this communication from the application to the database server. Um, or turning the rule off. And here we won't turn it off. We'll just go ahead and drop the packet and publish this. Now we should not get a response back as we're now blocking this traffic. So we see we click apply, nothing's happening. We look down here, we can see we're waiting, waiting, waiting. Um, at this point, our connection to the database, you can see our little wheel is spinning here is broken so even from a timing perspective we can see how quickly now how long it takes let's see our firewall rule there we go we opened it back up and as fast as that it was applied down to the actual host itself where the vm lives right so next in this rapid fire session we're going to take a look at creating an actual context profile again we're here we're going to in this case um take a look at um, limiting the TLS version. Um, so we're going to create a new context profile and we could say whatever. We're going to say maybe TLS version 1.2 here and we're going to add that as TLS 1.2. I thought I'd created that, but we will add it as TLS 1.2 and we'll go ahead and set our attribute. Um, so we will add this in this case, it's going to be an app ID. Um, so we're going to select from the TLS, or actually the SSL here, and then choose our TLS version. So overall, our main attribute we chose was SSL. And now we're going to set the sub-attribute. In this case, I want to set the version. Um, so we can see the different versions here. For this web server, I know it's 1.2. We're going to add that. Go ahead, click Apply, and Add here. We can see SSL with our sub attribute. We're going to name that TLS 1.2 used for TLS 1.2 to web servers. Let's see, we got to save and apply. Second here, maybe we hit apply. TLS, I created it. And now I'm going to go ahead and select it. So now this is the one I created, hit apply there. Now we can see it's in that profile, publish. And let's make sure we go ahead and have this now. We still have our communication. Now let's test it to make sure we see if it's working. Now let's say we'll drop this traffic now. Let's see what happens. What do you think is gonna happen now that we're dropping that TLS traffic 1.2? Now we can no longer query the database because our TLS version, and if we were doing a packet capture, we would see it that it's not setting up. Um, so we'll go ahead and drop this back to allow, publish. We can actually see some stats here, just high level stuff. 
um, but we can see our hit count, packet count. So I usually typically go back at this when I'm doing testing to make sure I'm hitting my rules. Um, now that we've allowed it again, we can see that it's working again as well. <clears throat> so the last thing we're gonna do here is maybe um, security wants to get us even a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna go ahead and identify the Cypher suite. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get uh, a Wireshark capture going. And we will just go ahead and do a capture and we'll start. And now we're gonna go ahead and access our database again. We'll do a couple queries. I'm actually gonna go, we have a couple, it's my web server two, and try that one. Um, so now we can go ahead and we've had these, so we should start to see them in our packet captures. I'm gonna come back here to Wireshark, whatever you use for a packet capture, and we will stop. And let me just sort this real quick. Now we wanna go ahead and look at that TLS traffic. There's a couple different ways you can filter your Wireshark traffic, but I'm essentially looking for this here. I'm looking for the client hello, and then I'm gonna drill down, and I'm gonna see, and down in the SSL information, the Cypher Suites offered. I don't wanna go ahead and put all these in here. <clears throat> in this case, if, I, if you didn't know what the server was coming back with, and I know now here is the Cypher suite that the server is coming back with. And this is really what I wanna know because now I can lock this down to say we're only gonna communicate with this Cypher suite and this is all we're gonna allow, right? So when I come back to my distributed firewall configuration, and I'm just gonna slide this over here so I can see. Now I'm gonna go back into that same context profile and I'm gonna set the actual Cypher suite. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go um, find my TLS here that I created. Let's see, it's a bunch of different profiles. Find the one that I want. TLS 1.2, here it is. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna edit this. And now when we go ahead, we're gonna go back into our attributes and we're gonna edit our app ID and we're gonna go into our sub attributes and add another sub attribute, this time the Cypher Suite. Now I'm just gonna put these on the same screen. We're gonna auto populate our Cypher Suite. So remember our Cypher Suite over here, we can see what it is. We'll look at that and then we'll auto populate as we go through here and get our Cypher Suite to match. And you can see how easy it is as it auto populates. And again, if I knew this, I wouldn't go through um, a packet capture. Oftentimes, um, you know, the application developer can tell me what that Cypher Suite is. But now we can see we're only allowing the Cypher Suite and this TLS version to this profile. So we've added a whole nother layer of security um, into these web servers. So we can apply this now. Oh, I might not have saved that. Let me just go back and double check if the TLS was saved in there. And let's look at our attributes real quick. Oh, no, see, I did miss that. So let me go back and modify that again. I just forgot to hit that save there. But remember, we go to our attributes. This is good so you can see it twice. And our sub attributes. We would do an edit here and now add our sub attribute. Again, it's the Cypher Suite and you get to see me do it twice. Again, it's a TLS E C D H E. SHA 256. We're gonna add that, we're gonna apply, we're gonna add again, apply. Again, here's where I missed the save last time. We click save. Now it's updated successfully. We click apply. So now we know that we have our sub attribution there. Um, it's all, if you notice when you do these profiles, they do automatically apply. I don't have to publish them after I make a change. So that's one thing to be aware of. I had to hit apply and publish after I created the profile, but when I went in and changed an attribute within the profile, if you notice, I didn't have to publish it. 
Um, but let's go back and see if we still have access here. Yes, we do. So we can still query the databases. That's great. If we go ahead and again, if we uh, drop this traffic now that we're matching, so we're saying if you're matching that TLS, maybe we're doing the opposite. We want to blacklist or whitelist a certain type of traffic. I choose TLS, the all my attributes that are in there and drop. And now when I go ahead, again, I don't have access to the database. The site cannot be reached. That's again, we're not allowing that communication. We'll go back one last time and we will allow that and we will publish that. Now, can we access it again? Yes, great. So there you have it, the simple demonstration of not only micro segmentation, but adding in a context profile um, to set the TLS version and Cypress Suite, and then even using something like Wireshark to go ahead and see how to capture, um, you know, what those TLS versions are um, in the Cypress Suite. And again, you know, just looking back at that once more, we can see within these client hellos, this is where I start with the uh, client hello there, to look inside at the SSL layer, and then we can see TLS version 1.2, very important there. Um, and then again, specifically, where you're not gonna get something like this out of a web browser, um, but what are the Cypress suites? And then more importantly, in the server hello, what is the server um, response for the Cypress suite that it wants to connect with? And again, use that within your context profile here. So I hope you enjoyed um, this brief video and this can help you get set up in your own lab or just have a better understanding of how NSX and the distributed firewall works. Thanks and have a great day.